okay? Because either I'm doing step one or I'm doing all steps one, two, and three. Then I'm doing step one and I return and I'm done, or else I'm doing step one, I don't return, and then I also do steps two and three. So I add those together. I could say theta n plus theta one, but theta n plus theta one is just theta n, because theta one is a lower order term than theta n. I can throw it away. Okay? So it's either theta 1 or it's 2 t of n over 2 plus theta n. Okay? Now, typically, we won't be writing this. Usually, we omit this if it makes no difference to the solution of the recurrence. We'll usually omit constant base cases because in algorithms, it's not true generally in mathematics, but in algorithms, if you're running something on a constant size input, it takes constant time, always. Okay, so we don't worry about what this value is, and it turns out it has no real impact on the asymptotic solution of the recurrence. So how do we solve a recurrence like this? I now have t of n expressed in terms of t of n over 2. Okay. So that's what we're going to do in, so that's in the book, and it's also in lecture 2. So we're going to do lecture 2 okay, to solve that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is give you a, uh, a visual way of understanding what this costs, which is one of the techniques we'll elaborate on next time. It's called a recursion tree technique. And I'll use it for the actual, for the recurrence that's almost the same, 2t of n over 2. But I'm going to actually explicitly, because I want you to see where it, hap where it occurs, plus some constant times n, where c is a constant greater than 0. So we're going to look at this recurrence okay, with a base case of order 1. Okay, so I'm just making the constant in here, the upper bound on the constant, be explicit rather than implicit. Okay? And the way you do a recursion tree is the following. You start out by writing down the, the left-hand side of the recurrence. And then what you do is you say, well, that's equal to, and now let's write it as a tree. I do C of n work, plus now I'm going to have to do work on each of the, my two children, T of n over 2 and T of n over 2. So if I sum up what's in here, I get this, because that's what the recurrence says. T of n is 2 T of n over 2 plus C n. I have 2 T of n over 2 plus a C n. Then I do it again. I say you have Cn here. I now have here Cn over 2, and here's Cn over 2. And each of these now has a t of n over 4. And these each have a t of n over 4. And this has a t of n over 4. And I keep doing that, the dangerous dot, dot, dots. Okay, and if I keep doing that, I end up with it looking like this. And I keep going down until I get to a leaf. And a leaf, I have essentially a t of 1. That's theta 1. OK, or a t of. And so the first question I ask here is, what is the height of this tree? Yeah. Yeah, it's log n. It's actually um, very close to exactly log n because I'm starting out with, at the top, with n, and then I go to n over 2, and n over 4, and over all the way down until I get to 1. So the number of halvings of n until I get to 1 is log n. So the height here is log n. Okay? It's okay if it's constant times log n, but it doesn't matter. Okay? How many leaves are in this tree, by the way? How 
How many leaves does this tree have? Yeah. Yeah, so the number of leaves is actually, once again, it's actually pretty close. It's actually n. Okay, if you took it all the way down. If you've made simple, let's make some simplifying assumption. n is a perfect power of 2. Okay, so it's an integer power of 2. Then this is exactly log n to get down to t of 1. And then there are exactly n leaves. Okay, because the number of leaves at the first here is. The number of nodes at this level is 1, 2, 4, 8. And if I, in general, go down height h, I have 2 to the h leaves. 2 to the log n, that's just n. OK? OK, so we're doing math here, right? OK. So now let's do the figure out how much work. If I look at adding up everything in this tree, I'm going to get t of n. So let's add that up. Well, let's add it up level by level. How much do we have in the first level? Just Cn. If I add up the second level, how much do I have? Cn. How about if I add up the third level? Cn. How about if I add up all the leaves? It's theta n. Okay. It's actually not necessarily Cn because the boundary case may have a different constant. Okay, So it's actually theta n. But Cn all the way here. So if I add up the total amount, that's equal to Cn times log n, because that's the height. That's how many Cn's I have here, plus theta n. And this is a higher order term than this, so this goes away. Get rid of the constants. That's equal to theta of n log n. Okay, and theta of n log n is is asymptotically faster than theta n squared. So merge sort on a large enough input size is going to beat. Insertion sort. Okay, merge sort's going to be a faster algorithm. Sorry, you guys. I didn't realize you couldn't see over there. Okay. Should speak up. Can't see. Okay. So, this is a faster algorithm because theta n log n grows more slowly than theta n squared. And merge sort asymptotically beats insertion sort. So even if you ran insertion sort on a supercomputer, somebody running on a PC with merge sort for sufficiently large input, clobber them. Okay, because actually n squared is way bigger than n log n once you get the n's to be large. Okay. And in practice, merge sort tends to win here for n bigger than say 30 or so. So if you have a very small input, like 30 elements, insertion sort is a perfectly decent sort to use. Okay? But merge sort is going to be a lot faster for even for something that's you know, only a few dozen elements. Okay? It's going to actually be a faster algorithm. Okay? So that's sort of the lessons. Okay? So remember that uh, to get your recitation assignments and attend recitation on Friday, because we're going to be going through a bunch of the things that I've left on the table here. And see you next Monday.